Hello everyone out there in the YouTubes, my name is Cadence and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bugira 6262 guitar amplifier. And don't forget, in the description below there are time codes that allow you to skip to different parts of the video depending on what you're interested in. So Bugera has been making quite a name for itself in the industry for some years now, designing and producing amplifiers that emulate other classic amplifiers at a more affordable price. The 6262 is essentially a copy of the PV5152, or the later iteration, the 6505 Plus, with a nearly identical knob layout and channel layout, as well as the internal electronics, it produces something very close to the classic PV sound. The amp I'm testing today is the original 6262, not the Infinium version that came out later, but by all accounts they practically sound the same anyway, so let's take a look at the amp and some of its features. So taking a look at the front of the amp, what you'll notice first, perhaps, is the fact that there's no Bugera logo here, even though there should be one. Now I bought this amp secondhand and the guy who owned it before me took it off. I think it looks pretty fucking metal, but whatever. So, inside you can see we have six tubes in the preamp section, three of which are 12AX7 tubes, or ECC83 tubes, and three of which are 12AX7A tubes. They shouldn't have too much uh, difference in their sonic characteristics. But six preamp tubes is a, uh, well, it's a lot of gain, let me put it that way. There's, there's, there's a lot of gain in those six little tubes right there, so you can blow up the planet with this if you really want to. Uh, in the back, you can see the four power tubes. Those are 6L6GC tubes, kind of an American style uh, power tube with a very big, tight bottom end. Sounds great, really good stuff. And if you look at the controls, you see there's a power switch and a standby switch, as well as their accompanying LEDs. These are blue. On the Infinium version, I believe they're orange, so that's an easy way to tell the difference. And you have a two-channel layout here with four different sections, two for each channel. You have the reverb and presence control for the lead and the clean channel, as well as the volume gain and EQ controls for both channels. Um, now on the clean channel, you actually have some additional controls. You have the uh, crunch switch here, which will turn the clean channel into, you guessed it, a crunch channel. Um, so you can get some nice distortion out of that. Um, effectively making the amp into a three-channel amp. Now if you have a guitar with, say, a mahogany body for instance, it might sound a little bit dark, and that's where the bright switch really comes in handy uh, to brighten up the guitar signal before hitting the channel itself. Um, and then on the right you have the input uh, where you plug your guitar in, obviously. Yeah. Let's take a look at the back. So taking a look at the back of the amp, you can see there is an effects loop, ascend and return, so you can plug in your delay and reverb pedals without disturbing the sound of your distortion and such. You also have a preamp out send, which is fairly interesting. So if you have a rack mounted power amp, for instance, you could use this out right here to send the uh, preamp uh, signal, the uh, distorted signal out to your power amp before it hits the power amp inside of this amplifier itself. You have an input for a, uh, a foot switch, specifically the Bugera FSB-104. And then over here you can see we have an impedance switch, which is really, really cool because, as you might know, a lot of guitar cabinets uh, these days and in the past have been either 4 ohm, 8 ohm, or 16 ohm. And with this amplifier, you can plug into pretty much any of them. So you're not limited in terms of which cabinets you can use with this amplifier. So you can just go out and buy it and plug it into what, whatever cabinet you have already, if you have one already, and not worry too much about that. You have two outputs here for the loudspeaker or the cabinet, if you will. And then, of course, you have your uh, power connector over there uh, to go into your, uh, your wall, I guess. And a little fuse switch stuff. So, now that you've had a rundown of the amp itself, I think it's time to hear how it sounds. But first, let me explain the signal chain. The original tracks were recorded some time ago, before I changed the pickup configuration in my Schecter Omen 7. Back then, it had a Lace Deathbucker 7 in the bridge and an Ibanez AH7 in the neck position, unlike now where I have the Seymour Duncan Nazgul in the bridge and my Lace Deathbucker in the neck position. So all the rhythm tracks you're about to hear were recorded with the Lace Deathbucker 7, again, some time ago. 
the lead part or solo if you will was recorded on the bridge pickup but I kind of switched to the neck pickup midway through when I start playing some of the higher notes and once again at the time that was an Ibanez AH7 pickup. All of the tracks were initially recorded as DIs or direct input tracks through my Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24 DSP audio interface. Now all of those DIs were then reamped through my Radial Engineering Pro RMP reamping box, which then went to my Jet City Afterburner Dual Stage Overdrive, which is uh, an overdrive pedal in the likes of a Tube Screamer, which was used as a volume boost and tone control before uh, the signal hit the amp. The amp was then plugged into the Ibanez Tone Blaster 412A cabinet, which is a 4x12 cabinet with some special speakers in it of some sort, and it was mic'd up with a Shure SM57.
So, what's the deal with the Bugera 6262? Well, I think the results kind of speak for themselves. This amp has enough gain to practically blow up planet Earth. So if you're looking for a metal monster and you're on a tight budget, this could very well be one of your best options. Now these amps can be hand used for next to nothing and they sound absolutely fantastic, much in the vein of the classic PV5150 tone, which has been used on countless legendary metal recordings and is still one of the most popular choices for metal guitarists today. Even if you plug directly into the amp without any kind of boost in front of it, you'll still have all the gain you could ever want, and the amp sounds surprisingly tight right out of the box. Do remember to be sparing on the presence control, and pump the mids a little higher than you think you need to, and you're pretty much guaranteed to have some amazeballs tone come out of the speakers. My name is Cadence, thank you for watching, and peace out.